All right. First of all, sorry for the late mailbag. We have to do the 3DS stuff. So much fun to play 3DS. Also, sorry for the microphone quality in this video. Apparently, I filmed this entire mailbag. My mic was like off to the side of the room. But let's get straight to the first question, which is a huge one from, I can't even pronounce this guy's name, who asks, could there be a possibility that generations of Hyruleans had altered the story of the goddesses into creation myth rather than creation fact, and Skyward Sword tells us the true story? Before I even get close to answering it, I want to talk about a game series that came out for GameCube that a lot of you might be familiar with called Bot and Kaidos. Well, actually, probably not many of you were familiar with it because it wasn't very popular, but it was amazing. It was two games, Bot and Kaidos, and then its sequel, Bot and Kaidos Origin. First of all, spoiler alert, I'm going to ruin this game for all of you. In Bot and Kaidos, you played as six adventurers who were trying to thwart the revival of an evil god named Malpertio. Throughout this, you find out that Malpertio was split into five segments, and those segments hold aloft five floating islands that everybody lives on. You find out why those islands are floating in the sky. Hint, it's with the evil god's power. And in the end, you obviously defeat the evil god. The whole story behind the evil god is explained to you in very, very great detail as the world perceives it nearly a thousand years after it happened. In Botankato's origins, you find out what actually happened, which is absolutely nothing like what people say. Happened. You find out that Malpertio uh, was not in fact a god, and there were actually no gods. This whole bit about the gods that you played the 60 hour game for in the original title was a farce. It was just five friends who happened to participate in a rather gruesome war, uh, and ended up kind of against their will, killing a lot of innocent people that they didn't intend to. Their destruction on the battlefield was so significant that they ended up becoming legends. I think that kind of explains where I'm getting at with the answer to this question. In fact, I don't even think I need to totally answer it anymore. Because, yeah, we could find out that the entire myth of the goddess's creation of Hyrule was completely wrong. That it has just turned into this incredible tale of ridiculousness over thousands and thousands of years of Hyrulean history. Nobody knows how the world was made. And we could find out that it was, you know, the Skyloftians that did it or that nobody did it, and we really just don't find out anything. We find out that nobody created the world, they just came down, they settled, and that was that. So it could be, it could be something like that. I almost hope that it is, because it would make the whole world a lot more realistic, and in a way, more magical, because we'd get to experience firsthand how the world was made. Which is, that's, that's just going to be so cool, if that's what it is. Now, second question. Asta315 asks, what would you think about a Legend of Zelda game that's rated M? Do you think it would be good? It would definitely have the dark plot that many Zelda fans are waiting for. First of all, I'm going to answer your question kind of in reverse. The dark plot that Zelda fans are waiting for already happened kind of twice. Majora's Mask, I don't think you can really get much more dark than Majora's Mask, in which you have to save the entire world in three days. And if you don't and you fail, it's the only Zelda game where you actually see everybody in the world die. So... <laughs> It's, I mean, that's pretty dark. That's legitimately dark. Twilight Princess also was very dark. I don't think Skyward Sword's gonna be dark, but they definitely have had the dark plot that Zelda fans are waiting for. How much more darkness do you need? It's a frickin' Twilight Realm. Its name means darkness. However, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Would an M-rated Zelda game work? I, I think so. I think it could work. You're talking about adding blood, adding a much more serious and adult plot. I'm thinking like like Half-Life 2 style here. Half-Life 2 always kind of reminded me a bit of Zelda because it was a little more exploration-y and plot-driven than most other shooter games. And I, lo I love Half-Life 2 to death. Half-Life 2 is great. Half-Life 2's plot is what drove everything. If there's gonna be a darker Zelda, it's gonna have to be really plot-driven. It's not going to be as straightforward as most of the Zelda games are. In fact, I think a darker Zelda, an M-rated Zelda, would probably end up being very non-linear. An M-rated Zelda game is gonna be a really tough sell to Nintendo's target market, which is children. It also could change the perception of the Zelda series, so that's a kind of delicate ground that Nintendo is probably not going to want to tread on. They already kind of did with Twilight Princess, which was rated teen, which probably stopped a lot of parents from letting their kids buy it. In conclusion, a M-rated Zelda game, I give it a yes, but I say that's pretty dangerous ground and it's got to meet 
a lot of very specific guidelines for it to be successful as what it would end up being, which is something incredibly dark, something with a lot, a lot of complex themes and motives. You know, it'd have to be very, very plot-driven. There would have to be exploration that helps drive the plot. It would, it would end up being remarkably literary, and I think it would be brilliant, but it would also be a very tough sell. Question three. Worst assassin ever asks, how do you think Link will interact with people in Hyrule? Even though we never hear him speak, it's implied in other Zelda games that he does interact and speak with people. But how is he supposed to interact and speak with people in Hyrule, when most likely he doesn't speak Hylian, seeing how he's from Skyloft? Do you think this will be a story element? That is another really good question. So that's three good questions so far. Wow. Loving it. So how does he speak the language of Hyrule? I see a couple possibilities here, so let's run them down. A, he never speaks in-game, so does it really matter what language he's speaking? Technically, yes, but probably no. So <laughs> answer one is that Nintendo doesn't explain it at all, and it's not a plot thing, and it's just not explained, and it doesn't matter. Answer two is they do that funny thing where, you know, like in sci-fi movies where main character goes to another person's planet, and somehow they speak the same language, and they get there, and they're like, whoa, what up? You speak the same language. How did you how did you do that? How'd you know that? They could they could just pull that and Link just magically speaks Hylian. I mean, he is the hero chosen by the goddesses, and that hero could be magically imbued with the ability to magically pick up languages that you've never heard of before. It could be pretty cool that he could do that. The third option is that nobody's living in Hyrule, so he doesn't need to speak Hyrulean or Hylian. He doesn't need to speak anything because nobody's there, which may happen. Could just be a bunch of monsters, and we all know monsters don't speak ever. I hope I didn't hurt the feelings of too many monsters. The cast of Monsters, Inc. is going to come after me now. Question four. Jumpman Leet asks, here's a mind-boggling question. Ooh, boggle me. Debbie has been rumored to be the spiritual incarnation of the Gilded Sword from Majora's Mask, but the Gilded Sword is actually an upgrade to the Kokiri Sword. So wouldn't it make sense if Debbie was the spiritual incarnation of the Kokiri Sword? That is certainly a question. Here's the answer. Uh, yes, but... It's, uh, you, pe people seem to be straying away from my point with all this. I know I had an entire mailbag about it, but I just want to clarify. My point isn't that Debbie is the Gilded Sword, it's that Debbie is just a spirit. I think that the design of Debbie shares way too many similarities with the design of the Spirit of the Skyward Sword, the young girl, for Debbie to be just a normal character. Plus, the fact that he can teleport and do all sorts of kind of magical-ish things. <laughs> Diamonds. Freaking diamonds. Freaking diamonds. Dude's freaking diamonds. Freaking diamond. Diamonds. Diamond. Diamonds. Freaking diamonds. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, right. He could be the Kokiri sword. I mean, let's backtrack to, to way back in ancient Helian history. They say that the Master Sword was forged by a bunch of ancient sage peoples. So it got forged by, by people. Humans. No one, no one incredible forged this thing. Likewise, no one incredible forged the Gilded Sword. No matter when it was placed in the timeline, that doesn't mean this guy was the first person ever to make a Gilded Sword. As I said in the, in the Zelda vlog, there could have been a thousand Gilded Swords. It's just a sword coated with gold. On a level, I don't understand how a sword covered in gold becomes sharper anyway, considering gold is one of the softest metals in existence. But that doesn't matter, because other people can make this. You know, someone could just take some gold powder and, and you know, melt it on top, of a, on top of a sword and make a gilded sword. It is quite literally gilded with gold. So does that mean he's an incarnation of gilded sword? Probably not. But my point is just that he is this, a spirit. I'm pretty convinced that he is some kind of spirit of something. But he could be a, the freaking spirit of the boomerang for all I care. I just really think the design of him, and I'm going to call her Adele for now, are too similar for it to just be no no connection whatsoever. Likewise, I don't know about the significance of the Kokiri sword. I mean, the Kokiri sword is just a sword too, isn't it? What, what was special about it? I mean, it was special that the Kokiri had it, but not really special in any other way. In fact, it was weak enough that you just abandoned it. I mean, what was the hero's sword in the Wind Waker? Did, did that have any significance? It's just a sword. These are just swords. People can make them. Which, by the way, lends to the question, how was the Master Sword really made? Why does it have a spirit? I'm not, I'm not going to actually answer that one right now. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Deal with it. Question number five. WK27172 asks, do you think that the Ocarina of Time in Ocarina of Time 3D 
will use the same gameplay mechanics as the Spirit Flute and Spirit Tracks. <laughs> a quick answer, but yes, I at least I hope so, because the Spirit Flute was awesome. Big, big yes to that. <laughs> Better use it like that. And the last question. The Flurry of Flames asks, how does Link notice his magic meter? Through fatigue or something? I don't know how Link notices his magic meter, but I know how I notice when my magic meters run dry. Whenever I've used my cane of Samaria too much, I always end up experiencing extreme cravings for things with the word magic in front of them. For example, I recently had to eat an entire box of magic erasers. I felt really, really good after that because my magic meter was full. I'm sure it's similar for Link. Well, Zelda Universe, I think that's all I got for you. Now that you've heard my answers to your questions that you asked me, you should ask me more questions for next week in the comments! Now! Do it now! And don't forget to subscribe to Zoniverse TV because we got a lot more Zelda videos coming up this week. We're doing like videos practically every day now. We got the Zelda vlogs. We've got a review that I'm going to do, 3DS later, full review with lots of opinions. You know how much I like opinions. And I will see you guys next week. Peace and Triforce pieces. La da 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 Dum 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 dum